Hi, this is Ms. Pellegrin, and today we're going to be looking at Module 2, Lesson 22, Solving Equations Using Algebra. So today, we are going to be looking at solving equations using techniques of making zero. So we know that we can make zero with the additive inverse and making one by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, which we know is by multiplying by the reciprocal. Students, identify and compare the sequence used to find the solution to an equation algebraically. And look at the equation with the tape diagram. So we focus a lot in 17, lesson 17 on tape diagrams and the way to do an algebraic equation, seeing that they were the same thing. Um, and so now we're going to look at it more in equations. So in example one, Yoshiro has a new puppy. She decides to create an enclosure for her puppy in the backyard. The enclosure is in the shape of a hexagon, which they tell us is a six-sided polygon with one pair of opposite sides running the same distance along the length of two parallel flower beds. There are two boundaries at one end of the flower bed that are 10 and 12 feet, and at the other end that are 15 and 20 feet. If the perimeter of the enclosure is 137 feet, what is the length of each side that runs along the flower bed? So the two that have the same distance. So our first step is that we should draw this out to get an idea of what it would look like. So we have two lines they said that are parallel and they are the same distance. So we're just going to call that in representing the same amount and then we have two more. They aren't the same, but when we draw them, they might look like it. Okay. And then we had two on the other end that were 10 and 12. That looks more like 10. That could be 12. Okay. So um, if the whole thing if the perimeter is 137 feet, so we know perimeter means we add up all the side. What is the length of each of the side that long, runs along the fire, flower bed? So we have N plus 12 plus 10. So I'm just going, starting at one end and going around. Plus N plus 15 plus 20 until I make it back, and we know that the whole thing is a total of 137. Okay, we want to model the equation with a tape diagram. So I'm just going to put my ends together now, in or next to each other. It's all as addition, so we can move it around as we please. 10, 15, and 20. And the entire thing is 137. What we know, we know these measurements. So 20, 15, 10, and 12 together gives us 57. So the measurement we know is 57. So we can do 137, take away that 57. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Gives me 80. So the two ends have to be 80. And so then I have two n, so I'm dividing by 2, which gives me 40. So the n, each side, is equal to 40 feet. Okay? So let's look at that in an algebraic expression. 
So we have our tape diagram, so we have two ends plus the 57. So we put together the things that we knew that could go together, and that gives me a total of 137. Okay? Just like we were doing before. First thing we did was we took about away 57 from the 137. And the reason for that is we we're trying to get in by itself. So right here, positive 57 minus 57, we know that equals 0. They are additive inverses. Additive inverse. Whoops, let me put it up here instead. And if you do it to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other. So we find our additive inverse. So we have 2n plus 0 equals 80. Well, anything plus 0 is equal to that number. And then we were multiplying by the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal. So multiply by reciprocal to create 1. Since this will cross simplify to 1 equals 80 over 2, which is equal to 40. So n is equal to 40. Does your solution make sense in the context and why? So I would go back and I would plug in and make sure that that would make sense. If this is 40 and this is 40, does the whole thing equal the 137 that we said? So 40 plus 40, 12 plus 10. 15 plus 20, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So yes, it does make sense. So always can check our answers. That's one of the things that I love about these algebraic expressions is that you can check your answers. Jenny is on the local swim team for the summer and has practice for four days per week. The schedule is the same each day. The team swims in the morning and then for two hours in the evening. If she swims 12 hours per week, how long does she swim each morning? Okay, so they want us to do it as a tape diagram. And they say that x equal the morning. Okay, so we know we have four days. And each day is the same thing. Morning plus the two hours in the evening. Morning plus the two hours in the evening. Morning plus the two hours in the evening. Morning in the two hours in the evening and the total that she spends that week is 12 hours so then 12 minus we have 2 4 6 8 did that by doing 2 times 4 so I have a total of 8 so I'm subtracting 8 which leaves me with 4 and then I have 4 X's so I'm dividing by 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so x is equal to 1. Does that make sense? So if she swims for 1 hour plus the 2 hours, so one day she swims 3 hours, and she swims 4 days a week, well, 3 times 4 does equal 12, so yes, that does make sense. So then let's do that algebraically as well. So she was swimming for... Four, the same thing. We can do the distributive property here, which would be four times x plus four times eight. Four times two equals eight, and the total is twelve. Okay. So first step is we 
do the additive inverse of that number that does not have a variable not by it. We call that a constant. Yes. Uh, so that leaves us with 4x is equal to 4. So this was the additive inverse. And then we multiply by our reciprocal. In order to get 1. So we have x is equal to 4 times 4 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4, so x is equal to 1. Okay. So then we have some exercises for you to try on your own, so go ahead, pause the video, take about two minutes to try this one on your own, and then resume the video. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this to be bigger to show it. So our first step was the additive inverse of the constant. Leaves me with 5x is equal to 15. We're showing our steps because it says justify each step. And then multiply by the reciprocal. So x is equal to 15 over 5. x is equal to 3. Don't forget, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. Box in and our answers is great. Okay, again, pause the video, try it on your own. 15x plus 14 is equal to 19, so we're subtracting 14. The additive inverse, what will make 14? 0. Positive 14, the opposite of positive 14, is negative 14. Leaves me with 15x is equal to 5. And then we're going to do the multiplicative inverse, which we call multiply by the reciprocal. So we're multiplying by 1 15th. So x is equal to 5 times 1 is 5. 1 times 15 is 15. That simplifies. 5 will go into 5 once, and 5 will go into 15 three times. So that does not equal 3. It equals 1 third. So simple. Okay. Now you have a little word problem, so you have to write the equation on your own. Pause the video and try and write that equation on your own. Take about a minute, 30 seconds or so to do that, and then resume the video to make sure your equation is right before continuing to solve. So Claire's mom found a very good price on a large monitor. She paid $325 for that. So that's our total. That was the monitor was only $65 more than that addition, half the original price. So half of the original that we don't know because it says what was the original price. Okay, so Half of means to multiply, so half of this original, and it was more than, it was $65 more than that, gives me a total of $325. It would have been okay if you did $65 more than half of the original equals $325. We can do both. 
in both ways, you're going to subtract minus 65 first. Okay, so let's do that both ways. You see, it doesn't really make a difference. That leaves me with 1 half x is equal to Two hundred and sixty, and same here, and then we multiply by the reciprocal. So X is equal to, let's see, twenty two sixty times two. Gives me 520. Multiply by the reciprocal. So we're multiplying by a whole number this time. X is equal to 520. Was the original price. Number four, pause your video, take two minutes, try it on your own. Okay. We're going to distribute the two first. So two times x is 2x. Two times four is eight equals 18. Subtract the eight from both sides. Leaves me with 2x is equal to 10. So again, this is the additive inverse. Then our next step is to multiply by the reciprocal. To equal 1, x is equal to 10 over 2 x is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. And finally, number 5. Pause the video. Try it on your own. Ben's family left for vacation after his dad came home from work on Friday. The entire trip was 600 miles. Okay, so we've got our total for our equation. Dad was very tired after working a long day and decided to stop and spend the night in a hotel after four hours of driving. So he drove for four hours. The next morning, he drove the rest of the trip. If the average speed of the car was 60 miles per hour, what was the remaining time left to drive on the second part of the trip? So remember, distance is equal to the rate multiplied by the time. So we're multiplying 60 miles per hour times the beginning of the trip, which was four hours, plus the end of the trip, which we don't know. And it gives us a total of 600 miles that we're driving. So 60 times 4 gives me 240. 60 times x gives me 60x is equal to 600. So that was because of the distributive property. Then we do the additive inverse. Whoops. Which is 240 and negative 240 take away of the constant, the number without the variable, this root constant. So 
So then I'm left with 60x equals 600 multiply by the reciprocal. So x is equal to 600 over 60. The zeros cancel. x is equal to 100. Oops, I made a mistake here. I didn't actually subtract it, just rewrote 3. 600, so 600 minus 240 equals 360. So then 360 divided by 60. So 6 will go into 36. 6 times, so 6 hours left. Okay, finally, in our closing, what do we mean when we say solve the equation, equation 6x minus 8 equals 40? This is actually in your lesson summary, so you can follow along. 6x minus 8 equals 40. Okay, so we haven't done one where we had subtraction on the left side. Our first step was always the additive inverse. So if we're subtracting 8, the additive inverse of that is to add 8. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. So this is still our additive inverse. Okay. Leaving me with 6x is equal to 48, and then we still multiply by the reciprocal, which was 1 sixth. So that leaves me with 8 is equal, sorry, x is equal to 48 over 6. And 48 divided by 6 gives me x is equal to 8. So if you go through on page 135 in the lesson summary, we have the same concept there um, that we work backwards to solve an algebraic equation. And they have a few more um, steps in there than we have been putting, um, but that's okay. We're taking a quicker approach, if you will, to it. And they also have that you're multiplying instead of by the reciprocal, um, they're multiplying by the multiplicative inverse in step five. So it's called. It's also called the multi negative inverse. And we know inverse just means opposite, so you're multiplying multiplying by the opposite or when it's flipped. Okay? And that is your two steps for two steps equations in solving algebraically.